Okay, so this is video number 12. Been trying to do this video for a week or so and uh, finally getting around to it. Um, you can see the boat is up on the trailer now. So we'll get to this in just a minute here. I want to uh, add someone ask about uh, how you lay out a semi V bow on a bow. So let's come over here to this piece of paper. I did a little drawing here and uh, this boat I'm building, you know, is a 40 foot landing craft, 12 foot beam, four foot sides, um, landing craft front door. Uh, but I had somebody ask me about, uh, the layout on, on the bow. So whether or not it's a landing craft style front end or just a pointed boat, the layout's the same. Um, we'll get to that in a second so basically you know what i got here is i had i had two I ha for the bottom of the boat there's four pieces of metal they were i bought them they were six foot wide by 20 feet long and uh quarter inch thick so because my boat is going on a ferry the ferry the guidelines are 13 foot 7 tall and no wider than 12 feet. So I, I cut my pieces down a little bit so I could get this boat on the ferry. I cut them down to 5 foot 5 by 20 feet by quarter inch. So there's there's four pieces. And so instead of 6 feet wide, I cut it down to 5 foot 5. So that the overall beam of my boat would be, you know, about 12 feet, which would go on the ferry. So... Uh, let's get to it here. Here's this is the layout. These sheets are flat on the ground. So like I said, I have four sheets So up at the front Basically what you want to do is uh, I come back about seven feet The reason I come back about seven feet is to create a nice smooth arc and You know when you're talking about the front end of a boat you want this front end to be um, a nice smooth radius if you come back like two or three feet, you're gonna end up with something like that. And that's not good because that just really bites the waves and it just is a bad front end. It's not long enough, it's not smooth enough. It's just real short and choppy, you know, right here. And uh, so that sucks. So uh, come back at least seven feet. Come back at least seven feet from the front of the boat and then draw a nice smooth arc. Now. I went 22 inches from here to the center line. I wouldn't do that. Go back and look at my video number one or two, and you'll see that that 22 inches created that front end to really come up, you know, and just really shot up to the sky. It was just too much. And what happened was because I, I wanted to make a landing craft front end, I had to cut that down because it was really like six feet off the ground. That 22 inches was just way too much. I would suggest 6 inches, maybe 8 inches. You can always cut more, but it's hard to put it back on. So, uh, backing up here, we're 7 feet from the front, which, and then we're, I went 22 inches. I wouldn't do that. I would just go 6 inches or so. Draw a nice, smooth arc. And uh, cut this piece out and use it for the pattern for the other side. This piece, cut it out. Use it for this side over here. That way they're both exactly the same. Once you have both of those pieces cut out, then you take come-alongs and you go underneath the sheets from this side to this side. And uh, you start drawing those come-alongs together and it will uh, take this arc and it will draw the arc together. And you just weld that as you come up. So basically that's, that's how you create you know a smooth bow for the front end then if you were making a normal type boat I didn't draw this on here I probably should have once these two once this is drawn up with the come along you would you know make a nice smooth arc this way damn it let me, let me see here like this because And it would go to this point right here. These these two points would meet. 
and then your sidewall would come up here and it would just wrap around to this point which would be touching this point which would give you you know a pointed boat and the sidewall would make up most of the sides at the front of the boat I don't know if that was really clear or not but it looks like uh, you know a couple of titties you know that looks like a boob and this side would look like a boob once you arced that off but the reason you don't do that in the beginning is you want this side to be straight where the come alongs can grab a hold of it. So go back about seven feet from the center line. I'd go out about six or eight inches, draw a nice smooth arc, cut this piece out, flip it over, put it right there. That way those two are exactly the same. Use your come alongs underneath the bottom to draw the boat together and weld this up as it goes. Once that's welded up, take a long piece of flat bar and create another really smooth long arc right here cut that piece out and then do the same over here use that as the pattern over here and then cut this piece out then when your sidewall is standing straight up it comes up front and it starts to wrap around the bow and these two points would be met because you've already welded that together and when you put those sidewalls on and you you start wrapping around the front make sure that you lean them out because you want the waves to splash away from the boat. You do not want your sidewalls to be standing straight up. So it takes a little bit of maneuvering and a little bit of pushing on your part as you're, as you're wrapping the sidewall around this, this long smooth arc to the point of the boat to get that sidewall to lean out. That's very important. If, if that sidewall is standing straight up, you've just made a submarine. You know, it'll just go straight through the waves and the water crashes over the bow and it's a really bad thing. So as you're tacking the sidewall on and you're cut, getting up here, make sure that sidewall is leaning out uh, so that the waves will splash away from the boat. And um, that's very important. So that's really pretty simple. That is... It is what it is, you know, it's not that difficult. Uh, let me just go over this one more time. Come back seven feet or so, six feet would work. Three feet would not. Three feet would create this crappy bow right here and it would bite the waves. You want something very smooth and a pretty long arc. So come back about six or seven feet. I went seven feet on this boat. And then unless you want to really a really dramatic bow I wouldn't go 22 inches right here I would only go about six inches from that center line I went 22 inches but that was too much take a look at my videos and you'll see how dramatic that bow came up um, so uh, cut this piece out use it for a pattern over here and then draw this up with your come alongs going underneath the boat and then weld this up together and then draw a nice long arc again to this point and this point will be at this point now because you've drawn that up and then cut that piece out and put that piece over here and use it as a pattern then stand I stand my sidewalls on the bottom of the boat I don't just push it up to it because think about the waves pounding straight up so instead of just pushing the sidewalls up to the side I stand them on top of it and then as you get up here with your sidewall, you're tacking it, make sure you've got a good bit of lean out. And it takes a little bit of manipulation, but with these nice smooth long arcs, it's not that difficult to do. Get that sidewall to lay out for you so the waves splash away from the boat. And then just wrap your sidewall on around the front. And the same thing on this sidewall over there. And then boom, you've created a semi-V boat. So I hope that was clear. Uh, kind of in a hurry today. I got to go to work this evening, but, uh, um, I'm hoping that's pretty clear for you. Uh, it's really not that difficult. If, uh, if you do these things, like I say, it's very important to come back about six or seven feet. And it's very important not to go out too far right here because 22 inches, just look at my video. You'll see what I'm talking about. I went 22 inches. I wouldn't do that. I go about six or eight inches right there. And uh, anyway, that is what it is. I hope that was uh, clear for everybody out there and that helps people because uh, I don't know anybody else on the internet who's actually showed this before. I don't think I've ever seen it. Uh, but that's how you create, you know, a nice smooth arc on a semi-V boat.
So whether or not you want to make it a landing craft or just a pointed style front and front end boat, you know, that layout is the same. Um, so let's push on. I uh, hope that was clear for you. So since the last video, I have finished welding the walk around all the way. Uh, I've put the, um, the rub rails on. I just, I can't wait to get this boat out of the shop because it's going to be so much easier to see for everybody. Let me walk down here just a little bit. But these are the rub rails that I, I put on. One, two, three. So I have three of these nice beefy rub rails on the side of the boat here. And uh, so, so since the last video, I've done that. I've done the walk around, completely welded it. Uh, and I made this frame right here. That you see, I just grabbed some uh, two and three eighths uh, tubing from an oil field company. Pretty cheap, 20 bucks a stick for like a 30 foot stick. Uh, I've got uh, four of these, uh, these uh, winches on there. And uh, that winch is good for one ton, which is 2,000 pounds. I figure this boat right now, this hull weighs about 5,000 pounds. So I have four of these. So that creates two, four, six, eight. That's 8,000 pounds. So I felt pretty comfortable that it would lift the boat. What's nice about this frame that I made is it's just barely wider than the boat. And that way, what we have here is a direct vertical pull. And so that piece of pipe that goes across the top there, you know, obviously, if you were picking something in the middle of that pipe, it's going to bow on you because there's no supports. But because I'm picking just really vertically right here beside the boat, I put one little, you know, little gusset right there that I'm hanging that off of. And so it worked out really well. It doesn't put any, any stress, you know, in the center of this pipe out, out in the center. So let me come back out here. I want to come back around here and uh, going back to the layout on the front end. Uh, uh, so, oh, sorry about that. Uh, so, so see, here's my layout. And, you know, like I said, that was, a, that was the last piece that I cut off, a nice smooth taper. So at this point, this bow, it could have been a pointed boat, you know, but because I wanted a landing craft style front end, I put this flat piece of metal all the way across there and then it goes back about seven feet. That creates the flat front end that I need for this landing craft door. And if I didn't want to do that, all I would have done was let my sidewalls wrap around here to meet this point. And I would have had basically a pointed yacht, you know, just like a normal boat pointed front end. So that's the difference right there. From where I, you know, I sideline, I sidetracked a little bit because I wanted to land in craft front end because this is a work boat. So the layout on the bow was all the same. Everything's the same until I get to this point where I want to put this flat metal across here so I can have a landing craft door instead of a pointed nose boat. So let's take a look at the side here and I'll show you how smooth this thing is. It just, you know, this is the first time that I've been able to see. Uh, the bottom of my boat because I raised it up in the air, right? And if you look at that, I mean, it don't get no better than that. That that notch went back, like I said, about seven feet. And that is a smooth, very nice front end. That's not going to bite the waves on you. It's going to split the waves. And uh, you can't ask for more than that. That's just, in my opinion, that it turned out awesome. Uh, the only mistake I made was, like I said, I, I notched it 22 inches from each side of the center line. And if you go back to video number two or three, you'll see how high that was. And I cut, you know, I cut, uh, three feet off of that from, from here. Cause it was, you know, what it went way up here. I had to cut that down and then give it a flat, a f make this, make this perfectly flat so that that flat sheet of metal can lay on there for the landing craft front end. Now, that sucked because I lost two feet of the length of the boat. Now, if I would have went, you know, just with, like I say, six or eight inch notch, I would have not lost that length of the boat. 
And if you look at those early videos, two or three, you'll see what I'm talking about. When I had to cut that front end down because the landing craft front door, uh, it was going on there. You know, I lost the length of the boat. Let me back up over here. What What's going on right here is, I got this bar in the way, but from right here where the boat was sitting on the ground to right here is about 26 inches. And, you know, when you're talking about a landing craft style front end, you don't want this to be under the water, obviously. So I was, as I notched this down, as I brought this front end down and cut all that off, I was very concerned with this, this, this hinged door, you know, I didn't want it to be so close to the water that water was always going to be, you know, in there, especially if you're talking about putting 10,000 pounds of cargo on this boat. You want enough height from here to here where you know that this door is going to be out of the water. So if we're talking about it sitting on flat, calm water, I bet this door is over 12 inches above the water line. Because like I said, I went from the bottom to right there, 26 inches. So just a little little tidbit for you. Don't, don't cut that thing down too low if you're going to make a landing craft style front end because you put some weight in the boat and you're going to have water you know just coming through this seam here and uh even though it's going on to a self bailing deck that's completely welded and it would run right out the scuppers it's still something you you want to think about as you as you engineer the boat you know you're thinking about things like this so i chose to go a little higher uh, a lot of people i've looked at their landing crafts and when their doors are laid down flat shit they're only about six inches above the water line and so I went a little more on purpose. Of course, I don't know what they went. I just looked at it and I chose to go from here 26 inches to that point. And uh, pretty confident that that's going to be at least a foot or so off of the water line. So, uh, so there's the, the big landing craft front door. I still got to do something with this area. Just totally not happy with that area. I don't want waves to be bashing on that because after a while it uh, uh, there's no stiffeners behind this either. I still got to put some gussets behind that so that if uh, you know I just I just need to do some more work here on this. I'm just not quite happy with that. But here's the other three um, uh, rub rails on this side of the boat, and uh, these rub rails are really awesome. They call it a four inch rub rail at uh, the welding store I mean at the uh, at the steel house so if you ever buy an aluminum this is a four inch rub rail and uh, these things are really cool and uh, not only do they act like a stiffener but anybody comes up beside your boat you it uh, kind of acts like uh, protection for the side of the boat so uh, you can see this is the other the other part of the frame over here like I said uh, what worked with the frame like I said a minute ago is I'm not picking it from the middle I'm picking it from the outside I put one gusset right there and I hung the snatch block or whatever it's called right there and it's it's very close to the width of the boat I mean we're talking uh, it shifted a little bit when I picked it up but you know I made I made the frame so that it was just a little bit wider than the boat and then the trailer is even more narrower than the boat, so it worked out really good. It's kind of hard to see because it's black, but the boat, you can see, the, I don't know if you can see it, but the tires are right back there. This boat's a uh, 12-foot beam, and this trailer, the axle, is as wide as you can have for legal reasons on the road. So this trailer could be used for other things, and you wouldn't have to have a wide load permit for it. In other words, the trailer is not built uh, wide load like the boat is. It's built because uh, I thought maybe I would use it for other things. And every time I go down the road, I don't want to have, a, have to have a permit. So the axles that I bought, they're as wide as you can go and have, a, have it legally, you know, in the, in, the, in the legal bounds of, I think it's eight foot six. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it's not just a trailer that's specific for this boat. 
uh, the boat overhangs it, it over it, the boat comes past the tires about 18 inches on each side so I still have to make lots of braces that go up at an angle to support the boat uh, the bunks that I'm gonna make uh, to support the boat but shouldn't be a problem uh, let's see I'm gonna I'm gonna climb up this ladder now because I want to show you uh, inside the boat what I had done like I said uh, Okay, so I completely welded the walk around all the way around. Took several days on that because like everything else on this boat, I welded it fully. There was, I didn't cut any corners, no stitch welding at all. I finished up my I be, I finished up my bulkheads where I had made these bulkheads in a couple different pieces. I went ahead and ground that down a little bit because the welds were kind of ugly. You know, it is what I, it is. Uh, I know I get good penetration on these welds because I'm watching it as I'm welding and uh, like I said I'm not the best welder in the world but I know for sure I have good penetration because when you weld something with aluminum it's it's like steel you go to the outside of it like where those triangles are everywhere where that's welded you'll see that line it's a penetration line you can see it on the outside now you want to make sure that you don't have any blisters coming through because if you get a blister on the other side of that weld that means you've almost burnt through and that's very bad and I looked at the bottom of the boat yesterday when I picked it up not one fucking blister so I did really good you know like I said before a long time ago in some of these videos I haven't welded aluminum in like 30 years so pretty happy with it even though some of these welds are gorilla welds you know anything that ugly is bound to be strong uh, really happy that I don't have any blisters I have good penetration lines all the way around so you know, completely happy with it as far as uh, putting my life on the line on this boat. I, I know I have good penetration and I didn't blister through anywhere that I can see so far. So let's talk about this front end. This was the last thing that I had not put stiffeners in. So what I did, I took a piece uh, about a piece of plate about eight inches tall right there and I did it in a couple sections just because it was a tough layout and I didn't have a full piece that I could cut that out of. And then I just did these shingles. That's kind of what I call them. I call these little shingles. Uh, they're uh, six or seven inch squares. And I just laid those down and I continued them right here, here and here. And on the other side where it's flat here, this is that flat piece of metal that you know creates the, the flat front end for the landing craft door. Um, I thought about making I-beams and I had somebody comment on that and I could have made the I-beams I uh, would have had to make them at least 12 inches tall in order to weld the underside of the top piece of the I-beam. But I chose to do it this way, and I don't know that it was any easier, because honestly that took quite a while to weld all of these squares. And I also did uh, some button welds in the center of those uh, squares down there. You can see there's a few, there's some holes there. there those are basically just button welds. I drilled a hole in it and uh, put a button weld in it. Um, the, the, the bow of this boat, because it is you know pointed and it is the shape that it is, is fairly strong anyway. It's not like a flat bottom boat, obviously. I mean, it, the shape of this boat in this area uh, gives it quite a bit of strength anyway. So I really think that I'm good there on that. I will just, I will just uh, take my one by two rectangle tubing like I topped these 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 uh, bulkheads with, and I will I will do my floor framing, and everywhere there's a vertical, it will hit one of those squares. Uh, and also everywhere where you know this stuff is, just like the I beams in the back of the boat, that creates a half inch bottom. So in my opinion, that's pretty damn bulletproof. Uh, and uh, you know you're pushing by some ice up by a fjord where there's a glacier and you know I just I like the idea that you know everywhere one of these things are that's a half inch bottom and uh, hopefully that's where the icebergs gonna hit you know if you run into some ice or a rock or whatever but uh, so that is what it is and one more thing real quick you see a gap right here I have a hinge right here I, I bought this it's an aluminum hinge and they come in six foot lengths so I'm gonna put a hinge across here with another piece of metal welded to it so that because there's a gap right there when this front door lays down and you're trying to you know dolly something up or you know use a use a uh, 
a wheelbarrow or something or come up you know with a wheelbarrow or a dolly or something this piece of metal that's going to be over here as this front door lays down that piece of metal will also lay down because it's tinged with it and that will take care of that gap that i have from you know the height of the floor right here and this front door as it lays down uh, so i'll show you that more in the future once it's welded on but uh just uh, kind of want to get this video up, and uh, I see I'm at 25 minutes already. So thanks for watching, and if you got any comments, man, just drop them down. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.